Hello to everyone. Welcome and thank you for registering to this webinar organized by the ICLA World Secretariat for Potential Applicants to the Transformative Actions Program, or the TAP. Uh, this webinar will be about introducing and explaining uh, the TAP. I'm uh, Annabelle Roblin, Junior Officer at uh, the World Secretariat. I am working on project uh, development regarding the TAP and also COP21, where um, ICLA and partners are, are organizing a TAP pavilion. I will present this webinar today together with Ate Oksanen, who is also um, working at the World Secretariat as Junior Officer on Advocacy and COP21. So Ate, if you would like to introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Annabelle, and welcome to everyone to, to today's webinar. So as Annabelle said, I work with her here at the ECLE World Secretariat in the COP21 TAP team. Um, and I will be taking you through the application process and especially the application form a little bit later on in the webinar. Thank you, Ate. Uh, so, uh, just a few words on the technical uh, matter. So, uh, you will be um, muted during the whole duration of this webinar, at least during the presentation presentation part. Uh, in the meantime, you may already uh, type your questions uh, in the question box that you should be able to see in your uh, on your interface, and we will address them uh, at the, the end of uh, the webinar during uh, our question and answer session. During this uh, question and answer session, you will also be able to raise your hand to ask your question. You will be unmuted and you will be able to ask directly your questions to us. Um, so, as I said, there will be two parts in this webinar. So, first of all, a presentation, 25-minute presentation approximately. Uh, where we will take you through the TAP, introducing and explaining the concept of the TAP and its meaning for ICLEI's work and strategy, uh, the content of the program, that is uh, the four pillars of the TAP, um, and then uh, the, some general information on the TAP 2015 application and selection process, that is the selection of TAP projects in the run-up to COP21 next December. So this will include information on the timeline of the process, on the selection criteria, on the application form, and on the selection process. And so, as I said, then we will have a question and answer session where you will be able to ask your questions and we'll answer them. So, also as a complement to this webinar, we will send you afterwards a link to a video uh, presentation made by um, Yunus Arikan, who is the Head of Global Policy and Advocacy here at ICLE. And this video will give you some more background information uh, about the international climate negotiations and um, ICLE's work towards, uh, in this process and towards COP21. So, let's start now with what is the TAP. So, the TAP is a 10-year program the purpose of which is to accelerate implementation of climate actions of local and uh, regional governments, both in the pre-2020 and the post-2020 period, while raising the level of ambition at all levels, local, national and international. So to be more specific, the TAP will seek to improve access to existing capital flows to citizen regions and also to catalyze additional capital flows from both public and private uh, investors. Uh, so to give you some uh, background information on the TAP, uh, the TAP is a response to a previous attempt by local and subnational governments to push for a 10-year action program to be adopted within uh, the UN FCTC framework. Uh, this proposal was put forward in the framework of the Local Government Climate Roadmap in 2013. And so, following up with this effort, now ICLE and partners have launched the TAP uh, outside of the UN FCCC process, while hoping, of course, that at some point in the future it will uh, feed into this process. Uh, so, coming back to the two missions or ambitions of the TAP, uh, the TAP has two separate but in closely interrelated missions. One is political and one is the climate mission of the TAP, we can say. So regarding the political mission, 
Um, the political mission of the TAP is really supported by ICLEI's key role as the focal point of the local government and municipal authorities uh, constituency, or what you should, may know as LGMA, um, in the UNFCCC negotiations. And so, as such, ICLEI represents cities and local and regional governments and defends their interests in the inter international climate negotiations. And so, in this context, the TAP will advocate for better and quicker access to larger amounts of climate finance for cities and regions. Why? Because this is where climate change can be tackled effectively, as we know, and because effective climate action at all levels has become urgent. So, as we know, there are a number of challenges linked to climate change and also to increasing uh, urbanization. And so, imp importantly, by engaging in the TAP and putting forward, uh, putting forward proposals of transformative action, then local governments and their networks will pursue and intensify their efforts to bridge the gap between negotiations and the implementation process. And that's a key point. And so this leads us to the climate mission of the TAP, which is also very important, of course. That is that the TAP uh, aims to mobilize cities and regions to design these transformative and bankable climate actions, to collect and showcase these actions, and where possible, the TAP also aims to assist the pre-brokering between local and regional governments on the one hand and financing bodies on the other hand. Um, so, before I continue, let me just clarify what ICLEI and partners can do for cities and regions through the TAP. So, um, what the TAP can do is to offer visibility to successful TAP projects, both through the pavilion and the online, online platform, uh, which I will talk about uh, later on. Um, the TAP will also offer the opportunity to engage more directly with representatives of the financial and business sector who will also be invited to the pavilion and uh, to consult this online platform. So here again, I will talk about this later. And regarding the application process in itself, uh, the TAP team here at the World Secretariat and in the regional offices can provide assistance in filling in the form uh, that is answering any question applicants may have. So this does not mean that we can um, gather the data for the applicant. This means that we, we can answer any questions, any technical question you may have on how to fill out the form, uh, providing feedback, um, and also um, providing translations. So at the moment, the, the application form exists uh, in English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Korean, Chinese, and Japanese. Um, and so importantly, applicants should note that the TAP does not guarantee the funding of the projects. Uh, as I said previously, ICLAN partners uh, can only assist in the pre-brokering between local governments and financing uh, institutions, which means providing a platform both virtual and physical, for these actors to meet and to explore opportunities for financing and implementation, but we cannot guarantee that if your project, if your project is selected, then it will have um, financing in the end. But however, again, the key bonus of the TAP is really the fact that it is supported by ICLEI's strong political role in the UNFCCC process, and also ICLEI is involved in a variety of other climate-related international fora. And so really, ICLEI, together with its partners has a really strong advantage as a facilitator of this pre-brokering uh, between cities and financing institutions. So moving on to um, how these two ambitions will be achieved. So uh, the TAP will rely on two processes, the process, process of mobilization of key actors at all levels and a process of visibilization of real and potential climate action. So this will be achieved through already existing tools, such as reporting platforms. Uh, but also, as I said before, the TAP will have its own tools, that is an online platform and a TAP pavilion at every COP, starting this year at COP21. At COP and so the TAP really will guide ECLEI's work with and for cities and regions over the next five to ten years. And it will really contribute to ECLEI's political agenda towards, but also beyond, uh, COP21. Now, if we look, uh, if we have a closer look at the content of the program, so um, 
the objectives of the TAP translate in four action pillars that you can see on your, on your screen. So first of all, the TAP project pipeline, which is the process by which every year up to 100 TAP projects are selected in the run-up to the, the COP and presented during the COP. And so during this process, cities and regions are mobilized to apply to the TAP, uh, supporting in their application, as I said before. And so this stage obviously is already underway. And be aware that uh, the final deadline for uh, submitting an application is the 15th of September uh, 2015. Um, regarding the TAP platform, so this is what I was referring to as uh, the online platform. So before the COP, all the projects submitted by cities and regions, whether they have been selected or not as TAP projects, will be featured on this platform. Uh, the purpose of which is to centralize the projects and make them more visible, enable uh, financing institutions, of course, to have access to relevant information about the project so that they can consider potential um, financing of the project. Uh, turning to the TAP pavilion, this is the physical space where the selected TAP projects will be presented to national delegations, international donors and financing agencies during the COP. And so, as I said, the first pavilion, the Cities and Regions Pavilion, or TAP 2015, will be organized uh, at the COP21 this year from 30th of November to uh, the 11th of December. Um, and finally, the TAP Advocacy for Accelerated Climate Action. Uh, this will build on previous achievements in local climate advocacy and will diversify and strengthen it in various ways. Uh, so, of course, this work was, will um, seek to raise awareness of the potential of transformative uh, local uh, climate action. It will seek, importantly, to deepen the dialogue with national governments, promoting effective vertical integration between different levels of government, and also um, reinforce the engagement, of course, with international and national funding bodies and development agencies. Um, and finally, continue to coordinate um, the uh, information sharing on subnational climate finance uh, on various uh, fora. And so overall, the TAP advocacy work will really seek to create, to create this essential interaction nexus with, between all levels of government and to engage uh, with um, financing bodies. So uh, turning to the TAP 2015, TAP 2015, sorry, application and selection process. So now you should be able to see uh, the timeline of the process, which started uh, early May, as you can see. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the next and final deadline will be on the 15th of September. Uh, so um, to support the application process, several webinars uh, such as this one uh, are being organized. So, so the next one is going to be, and the final one is going to be on the 7th of September. Um, the application form exists in several languages, as I said before, all downloadable from the TAP website. Um, by the 15th of September is also the time when uh, partners of the TAP will appoint um, members to sit in the selection com to sit in the selection committee so that's also when the selection of top projects will start um, then mid october at the latest uh, successful applicants will be notified uh, whether or not they have been well so this will applicants will be notified. And then uh, towards the end of October, the online platform will be activated in preparation for the COP. And so finally, up to 100 projects will be presented in the pavilion during COP21. So now if we have a look at what is a TAP project, so uh, when we talk about the TAP project, we, are, we can refer to two different types of projects, fast track transformers, or post-2020 transformers. They differ in three different respects. So first of all, the stage they have reached, uh, that is either they are already fully designed with a clear budget, a clear action plan, and a management structure that is already defined, or um, the projects only have a concept ready. Uh, then in terms of the needs identified uh, to enable the implementation of the project, uh, either there's only a need for additional uh, finance, either through investment or grants, or the project not only requires additional finance, but also additional advice and expertise 
in terms of capacity building, strategy development, uh, technical and financial advice, etc. And so finally, regarding the implementation period, either the project will deliver results um, before 2020, so in that case it will be a fast track, or the results um, or the impact of the project will be uh, achieved after 2020, and so in that case it would be classified as a post-2020 transformer. And so be aware that uh, applicant can submit both type of projects uh, now. There is no restriction on that. Now if we look at uh, the criteria for the overall selection and distribution of uh, up to 100 TAP projects, um, the five criteria will be taken into account. So first of all, the level of transformative potential of the project, which I will define in the next slide. Um, the regional balance of the projects, that, it, that is, we look at um, whether, we, we look at the fact that the projects are distributed fairly equally between the north and the south. Um, and then we look at the balance of mitigation and adaptation projects. We look also at the sectorial balance, that is, there can be projects in transport, in energy, in biodiversity, in housing, but also in education. So really we are looking for diversity in that respect. And finally, we are also looking for transparency, that is, we, are, we will look at how the different uh, applications, um, how informed the different applications are. Uh, now, if you look at the criteria for selecting individual projects, so the key point is that um, the project should, ha should have the potential to transform society. So what we mean by that is that the project should answer uh, three criteria. Uh, it should be ambitious, it should be cross-cutting, it should be inclusive. So if we look closer at what this means, um, so you can see on your screen, first of all, ambitious. So projects can be either first-time projects, never implemented before, that will benefit a large proportion of the population, or they can be already existing and they are transformative, transformative uh, as in their ambitious dimension would uh, lie in the fact that um, they will benefit, they will be scaled up and benefit a larger proportion of the population. Uh, in terms of cross-cutting, we look at how different communities will benefit from the project, how different types of uh, resources will benefit in terms of management, so uh, such as, well, sustainable uh, energy, air quality, land use, procurement, etc. And we look also at how the project contributes to other subnational, national and global sustainability goals. And finally, regarding the inclusive uh, criterion, uh, we look at how and if the project encourages cross-departmental coordination for an effective implementation of the project. We look at how the civil society is engaged in the project, uh, how the project uh, fosters also collaboration with other levels of government, and finally, how and if the business sector is um, is engaged also in uh, the implementation of the project. Right, so let's now turn to the TAP application form. So Adi will uh, take you through the form. Yes, okay, thanks Thanks a lot, uh, thanks a lot, Annabelle. Um, so I will be taking you through the application process a little bit here and uh, through the application uh, form itself. Um, so to apply to the TAP, you have to go to the TAP website, so that's tap-potential.org, and you would have to go to the apply page that we're on right now. Um, now, as you'll see on this page, um, you can choose to apply either through the offline application form, which is right here, uh, or through the online system. Um, but if you're already reporting to the Carbon Climate Registry, uh, you may prefer to use the online form because you can use the same login details um, and uh, some of the content is common between the CCR and the TAP forms, such as the contact details, some of the data and the applicant profile, the climate commitments, and this information is already entered there in the CCR platform and will populate your TAP application form, which will save you some time and, and resources. 
Um, but for applicants who are not reporting to the CCR, which is, um, as you may know, the world's leading reporting platform for local and subnational governments, um, you can decide to register at the same time as uh, you are applying to the TAP, uh, right here. I mean, um, you can you can register. You can choose to register to the CCR uh, during your TAP application process, sorry, and this will enhance the transparency of your commitments. And it's a good opportunity to show your climate commitments and your leadership. Um, so either you register on the online form, um, so that you would do here by registering here, and you'll be given login credentials to fill in your application. Or if you prefer, you can use the offline form, and uh, you will be able to indicate if you like to report to Carbon uh, in that form and at the same time as you apply to the TAP. So um, we can now start um, looking at the content of the form itself and at the form. Uh, now I'll download, I've downloaded the offline version for practical for purposes. Um, so to download the offline application form, uh, you would be still here in the apply page. Um, and it's a two-step process. I mean, the first step is, of course, for you to download the application form right here. Um, just like I just like to point out as well that it's available in all these different languages now. Um, and once you've filled out uh, the application form uh, with all the project details, etc., uh, it should be submitted by going into step two right here filling in some of the basic information right here and submitting it to us by clicking on this choose file button right here. Now, along with your application, you'll also be required to attach some supporting documents, uh, such as your local government logo, greenhouse gas inventory, etc., um, in a compressed zip archive. Now, there are three ways of sending us uh, the supporting documents. You can either do it right here by sending us a zip archive of your supporting documents uh, by clicking the second choose file button right here which will upload and send us your supporting documents or as an attachment to an email. I'll show you the email address a bit later on or um, through the online application system once you've submitted your form and received login credentials to access the online version of your application. Because please note that the, um, the offline application forms submitted via this website will also be uploaded onto the online application system. Um, applicants who choose the offline option will also be given login credentials to access and edit their application later on through the online system. Uh, but do not worry, only the, the TAP team and the applicant will have access to the submitted information, of course. Now, I think it's time to move on to the application form itself. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all of the fields, as you'll see that there's quite a large number of them, but I'll take you through the main sections. Now, uh, I think this is a good opportunity to, uh, to stress that the form may seem a little lengthy, uh, but uh, it has been diligently designed to minimize the workload for applicants while, while still trying to capture the, the kind of detailed and comprehensive information on the projects that would, uh, would really interest potential uh, financers of your, of your projects. Now, the, the application form is composed of six sheets. The first one is the one right here. It's called the Read Me Sheet with instructions that applicants should read carefully uh, before starting to fill in the, the form. Um, so there's information on the form it, itself and on how to upload various things. Um, this, uh, this tab will tell you that the green sheets in the application form are mandatory. Uh, and the only non-mandatory tab that doesn't need to be filled in is the blue one right here, which is the last one. It's called Applicant Commitments, and I'll show you that a bit later. Um, it also tells you here that all fields that are marked with an asterisk are required mandatory fields. Uh, you'll see also in the application form that some fields are drop-down menus where you simply have to choose an option. 
and other fields are descriptives, descriptive ones with manual and manual entries. Sorry, where you just type in uh, your information. Uh, the fields in italics, uh, which you'll find quite a few over here, for instance, uh, they're there to collect the complementary information. So they're not mandatory, but they will definitely enhance the value of the application. And of course, the more detail we have about your project, the better. Um, there's also the same information that I told you about sending the supporting documents. Just one extra information as well is that we ask uh, that in the fields where the supporting documents are requested requested sorry to please specify the full file name with the file extension in such fields uh, now I'll show you that a bit later on all right so I think we can move on to the registration tab uh, now this is just some basic information about the applicant, about a designated contact point for this, this, this uh, project that is being submitted and to the TAP, political liaison uh, with, uh, that works with the head of government, and uh, towards the end here, uh, we ask uh, you to agree to some terms and conditions. Now, the uh, only real condition here for our form is that um, you accept that the information provided in the next tab, the tab overview tab, uh, can be made public on our online tab platform that Annabelle talked to you about. Uh, but I'll show you the next tab in, a, in just a few seconds. And then uh, later, uh, there's also here and towards the end a um, a place where you can choose to indicate if you wish to report to the carbon climate registry as as mentioned earlier so now onto this next tab that is the tap overview tab and we like to call this the most important tab in the form because it is supposed to capture the transformative potential of your project to show how it fits into the three criteria that Annabelle mentioned earlier uh, the idea here is that by filling out this for this tab, you will be helping us in the selection process, uh, especially in the first screening of all the projects. And as I said, uh, we we ask you to accept that the information provided in this particular tab can be made public on our TAP online platform uh, that will be showcasing uh, all of the, the the submitted TAP projects and will be up and running um, in October. We, we ask you here to really tell the story of your application, of your project. Um, what is transformative in one city or region will not be transformative in another. Uh, so it's important to show how your project is trans transformative within your own local context. And this will also um, be taken into account during the selection process uh, by helping us better understand the specific conditions uh, that you are under as an applicant. So I think we can move on to the next one, the applicant profile tab. This is uh, there to provide some background and contextual information about the applicant city or region. Um, among others, we ask you for some information about your your government's climate ambitions. Uh, you'll see several fields here requesting that type of information. We ask for sectoral information as well uh, that we invite the applicant to fill in for the sectors that are re relevant uh, to their government and to their project. Now, on to the next one, the Project Profile tab. Now, uh, this is also quite an important tab as we ask you for some, some core and detailed information about the project. Um, so, about the concepts of the project, right here, about the management structure of the project, and, of course, more detailed information on really the transformative potential of your project. For instance, we'll be looking at the co-benefits uh, of the project in terms of uh, sustainability. And here again, we ask the applicant to only fill in the, the applicable fields that are relevant to their project. Um, as well, in terms of the climate potential now, it can be either mitigation or adaptation. So we ask you to fill in the, re the relevant fields for you. 
uh, towards the end of this tab here, we ask you also to provide uh, some information about the financial and technical feasibility, which is very important information for the, the financial institutions that will be looking at these projects. Um, we ask you in this tab to provide quite a few supporting documents as well. So these are all marked with an asterisk. Um, so you, you can upload them via the three uh, methods that I mentioned earlier. And uh, yet again, uh, as I said before, it'd be great if you could write the full file, file name right here in these fields here. Um, now, if for any reason you cannot provide the mandatory data or the mandatory uh, supporting documents, uh, you should attach a note uh, along with your ap application outlining the reasons why you cannot do so. Uh, and this will help the selection panel to, to understand your, your situation and the kind of obstacles that you've run into. Now onto the last, very last tab. This is the applicant's commitment tab. Now this is, as I said, the only one that is not mandatory. Um, it's it's there if if the local government uh, that you represent uh, has decided on specific climate targets, either mitigation or adaptation. Um, you can report them in this sheet uh, in order to show how the project that is submitted can help reach these targets or how uh, the commitment itself can be transformative. Now, if you choose the offline form, as indicated, once you have completed the offline application, uh, you must upload it on the TAP website, as I showed you here, with the two-step process, uh, together with the attachments in the three ways that I indicated earlier. Now, I think that's that's pretty much it for me. Um, I'll hand it back over to Annabelle now. Thank you very much, Ade. So I will just say now a few final words on the selection process. So just to say that um, several uh, entity, two entities will be involved, so a TAP project selection panel, an expert committee, and so the principle is that each TAP partner, that is uh, local government organizations, financing institutions, civil society, NGOs, etc., will appoint a representative to sit in the project selection panel and an, an expert to sit in the expert committee. And so the, the principle is that the expert committee will make recommendations to the TAP project selection panel. And uh, a final um, information is that the process will be based on a consensus-seeking approach that is rather uh, than um, rather than a strict voting system whereby a majority would win. Um, the selection will rather be based on a consensus seeking approach that is really looking for general agreements on what a good STAP project is. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. So uh, as I said at the beginning of this uh, webinar, uh, if you have any question, uh, if you would like any clarification on uh, what has been said during this webinar, please feel free to do so. Um, so I can see that we have a question from uh, Devin, uh, which is about, uh, so can you clarify if TAP is only for prospective projects and or projects that have been implemented and achieved measure, measured outcomes? Um, yeah, thank you Devin for, for this question. So um, the answer is that the, the both type both projects, both type of projects can be submitted to the TAP really because the objective of the, of the TAP is really twofold. That is, one is to show the achievements um, that have already well been, that are already take, taking place in local and uh, regional governments. And so what this means is that uh, um, the project uh, that has already achieved outcomes is going to be classified as a fast track transformers insofar as uh, outcomes are already there, whereas prospective projects um, and the TAP is already is also seeking to, to, uh, to show the potential and so in that respect prospective projects are also welcome. Um, how this should be done is that um, 
obviously, um, the applicant should try and demonstrate that the project has already been thought through. That is, the applicant is not starting from scratch in a way. What I mean by that is that in the applicant, if it's a prospective project, we should still have the feeling that so the project has been thought through. That it means that the project is real realistic in terms of. Uh, technical feasibility, financial feasibility, so where, while there is no need to have a, at this stage, of course, uh, all these studies already done, there needs to be some kind of, um, of proof, if we could say, that uh, the project has already been thought through and that, um, yeah, there is some concrete maybe uh, concept, uh, as we said, that the, there, needs to be, there needs to be a concept already uh, for post-2020 transformers. Um, so I, I, I hope this answers your, your question, Devin. If not, feel free to raise your hand and maybe to, uh, to react to this. Um, so we do not seem to have any other question for now. Um, in any case, um, this was this was a rather general uh, session on the tab. So, if any question comes after that, don't don't hesitate to contact us. You can see on the, your screen um, the uh, contact details of Marc Sophie Bayer, who, Bayer, who is the tab COP21 coordinator here at the World Secretariat. So, um, yeah, if your request is more about the tab, there is a specific email address, and if it's more about the pavilion. In itself, there is also a specific email address. So, Annabelle, I'm I'm seeing some some extra questions here, so I'm hopping in. Um, so, we have one question from Bowden King: um, If a project is not seeking additional funding but wishing to share a very positive experience, is this okay? This is uh, more than okay. It is uh, it is even uh, recommended to definitely share uh, share your experience by by uh, by highlighting. Uh, your project through the TAP. Uh, so the TAP will uh, be promoting a wide range of, of, of projects, including projects indeed that are not looking for funding, but are looking to promote a way of doing things uh, that could be possibly replicated in other cities, other regions, in different parts of the world. Um, and this is all part of Eclays and uh, the TAPS uh, advocacy efforts as well to show uh, to what extent local and some national governments are contributing to uh, tac tackling climate change. Um, so we definitely encourage you to apply for the TAP even if you are not looking uh, for funding. Yeah, I um, will just add that uh, indeed this also serves the, the political um, aim of the TAP and it also serves the cities and regions, of course, applying in that it really shows, um, you know, what has been what is being achieved and done by local and, go and subnational governments, and and uh, yeah, it really feeds into the advocacy strategy of uh, of ECLA to show what is being done and why why finance is needed, uh, why more finance and easier access to finance is needed uh, at the local level. So definitely, um, we encourage you to to apply. All right, so um, I hear, I see that we have uh, one extra question as well from Suzanne. Um, can you comment more on existing projects that might apply? Um, so um, maybe to add something to what uh, Annabelle was saying previously is that we also have this distinction in in the in the application between first of its kind projects and significant scaling up projects. So first of its kind projects are projects that truly have never ever been implemented and do not exist. Uh, and then there are the significant scaling up projects, uh, which are projects that are ongoing, that have existed, but will be scaled up uh, to serve, for instance, a larger proportion of the, the local population, 
uh, or to, to serve a different group of the population or in terms of the intensity uh, of, the, uh, of the efforts that will be made, uh, whether it's mitigation or adaptation. Now, these would represent two, uh, two ways of scaling up an existing project. Um, so um, maybe Annabelle has has something to uh, ha has something to add to this. Um, um, yeah, I was just wondering, Suzanne, if um, if you had a specific idea of a project in mind uh, that you would like to share, or if not, if this if uh, at his answer is answers your question. Um, Suzanne, we can maybe unmute you uh, in case you want to, uh, if you if you want to react to what we've been saying. So I'll I'll unmute you now, and we'll be we'll be able to we'll be able to uh, to hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. We just saw your message there. I think your response was okay. Okay. That's great. Um, so we will not unmute you then. <laughs> Um, are there any other comments or questions from uh, from any of the other participants? Feel free as well if you if you feel like um, telling us a bit more about your project uh, to give us some um, some 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 indication of what you're planning to uh, to apply on, uh, and we can give you some some quick feedback about that. But uh, otherwise, as uh, as Annabelle said, you can always contact us via via email. It's, it should be quite easy, and we're, we try to respond quickly to 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 the uh, to the requests and to the questions. All right, so I don't see any any more activity from our participants. Maybe Annabelle, should we? Um, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. So um, yes, we just have now to to thank you very much for uh, for participating in this uh, webinar. Um, so the, the the recording of this webinar will be shared shared with you uh, soon after um, this webinar. And so, yeah, we we are. Really, really looking forward to discussing and receiving your TAP applications. Uh, thank you very much, and don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, we have one question from Suzanne. <laughs> uh, as we still have just a few minutes here, I think we can probably uh, probably answer it. No, it's okay, Suzanne. <laughs> um, so you say one more thing. What if we are not a local government, but our uh, federation representing local governments. So we have uh, we have had some some cases of applicants uh, uh, in 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 this particular case. Um, in this case, we 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 ask you to still make the application out in the name of one local government. Uh, perhaps you can associate the names of several local governments, but since we're trying to promote um, our TAP projects in a coherent manner, whether it's in the TAP online platform or at the COP, uh, the idea really is to represent uh, projects that are, uh, you know, uh, that are, that are headed up by, by local governments themselves. So ideally, um, you could definitely submit the project, but have it in the name of one uh, of the local governments, or even perhaps several uh, local governments. And, yeah, I would just add and, and with their approval as well. But um, yeah, I would expect you wouldn't do that without their approval. Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, Suzanne is uh, specifying. Uh, they're a national federation, yeah, okay, but I'm guessing you're a national federation of, of local governments, so that would definitely, definitely work, not yeah. a problem. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so no more for now. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Suzanne. Um, so if there are no more questions from any participants, um, I think we'll end the, the webinar here. So on behalf of Annabelle and myself, we'd like to thank you very much for participating, and um, we hope to hear from you very, very soon. Thank you very much.